Hello book people, PT here to talk about some of my recent comic book reads. I'm going to talk about three comics that I've read recently. The first one is The Black Widow Volume 1, A Finely Woven Thread. That is by Nathan Edmondson and art by Phil Noto. Basically this is just your classic spy story. What I liked about it was it was very well written, very uh, very tense and very straightforward, very accessible too. You could definitely tell that this was written to be able to be read by someone who didn't have any knowledge, prior knowledge of the Marvel Universe or maybe someone who just did heard of Black Widow from the movies or something like that. It works really well, um, but it also works, I think, on another level, even if you know a little more about the Black Widow. Uh, one really interesting thing that I liked about it a lot was that it kind of talked about um, Right at the beginning, it talked about you don't need. I think Black Widow said something like, "You don't need to know my origin, or this isn't going to be an origin story." It and it stayed true to that. It's not about her origin, although one of, like the main concept of the book is that Black Widow basically needs to make a lot of money because uh, while they don't really come out and say it, what's strongly implied is that she is supporting a lot of people, um, and I think they're. What's implied is that they are like the families of people that she has killed when she back when she was a KGB agent and working for other governments and things like that. And now she's trying to uh, kind of like make it right and take care of their families. So she has like a huge monthly bill she has to pay and she takes all these kind of like spy espionage kind of jobs in order to pay for that. And we watch as she does so. Um, basically, the story is just, uh, she kind of uncovers, I'm not going to go into it too deep, but she uncovers this big international plot while she's on a mission and faces it off against this um, kind of shadowy bad guy, shadowy organization thing. Um, interesting, the, the story was cool. Um, I think the story kind of takes second place, though, to just the, the great writing. The, the writing had a really, like, immediacy to it, and it was very well written, and the artwork worked very well, too. So if you if you um, are not a person who often reads Marvel Comics, even, I think this would be a good one to dip your toe into. I think it's also a good counterpoint to Hawkeye, uh, Matt Fraction's Hawkeye, which, you know, is about Hawkeye when he's not in the Avengers, and he's kind of just being a dude chilling out in his apartment and you know gets into all sorts of trouble but he's just trying to be a regular guy whereas this is the complete opposite it's black widow she almost doesn't have a personal life she uh is she is what she is she is the job she is a spy and uh the story kind of addresses that that she's takes great pains to be unattached in in all sorts of ways all right i said that one was accessible on the other end of the spectrum we have the multiversity by grant morrison and a plethora of artists including uh, ivan rice joe prado jim lee doug monkey frank coitley chris brouse von oliver and cameron stewart um this is Grant Morrison, it is Grant Morrisoniest. Grant Morrison is one of my favorite writers for sure. One thing about him a lot of times though is that the beginnings of his stories are very accessible and very straightforward, or at least pretty straightforward, and then things get really weird as the story continues. This did not play by those <laughs> rules. This got weird right away. Basically the concept is within the DC universe there are kind of 52 parallel Earths. Um, that's not something new to this. That's something that's common within the DC universe. Um, there's a little like map of these worlds here and um, on the inside of the jacket but basically it does kind of summarize the story what's happening is there's this comic book that's being produced in the 52 worlds that is sort of like a virus that when people read it it uh, is released into their world so that's like kind of the short of it but each issue is is takes place on a different world and could really be its own story. They're all kind of standalone stories, but they work together. And there's lots of really interesting stories. Like there's one that takes place on a world where all the superheroes are um, are supporting the Nazis, like the Nazis won World War II, and this like Superman was uh, born in in Nazi Germany and or was was adopted and landed in Nazi Germany, and all the other superheroes are. Uh, uh, Nazis as well. There's one um, that takes place in the Charleston universe, which is really interesting and is very Watchmen kind of influenced. The Charleston universe is like the universe that has like Blue Beetle and um, The Question and, and some of those kind of heroes, Captain Adam. But overall, it's really good book. Definitely not it's very accessible though. If you are not already into the DC universe, that would not be a good starting place. But it it. Is Grant Morrison doing really what he does best and what I love him for, which is 
extreme weirdness. So <laughs> good job, Grant Morrison. The last one that I want to talk about is Southern Bastards by Jason Aaron and Jason Latour. I read volume one, which is called Here Was a Man, and volume two, which is called Gridiron. So this is published by Image Comics. It is the story of a guy who goes back to his hometown, uh, his small southern hometown, after living his whole life away from there. Uh, he got out, got out of there right after high school and hasn't really been back since, and he's coming back to bury his father. And this town is basically run by a kind of a, like a criminal organization almost, but it's headed by the football coach, the high school football coach. Um, and he kind of gets mixed up in what's going on in this town and it gets extremely violent. <laughs> I like this book a lot. I'm not always in for like ultra violent stories like, uh, but this one like actually had a lot of heart to it and, and a lot to say I think. So I really liked it. It's basically this guy going back to his hometown and at a certain point in the story without ruining anything he uh, you know kind of has to decide is he turned his back on this town a long time ago um, and decided to go live in the city and, and not worry about like all the racism and, and different crazy things that are going on in this town but in this story he's kind of forced at some a point to choose like is he going to turn his back again or is he going to do something about it and uh, his choices really resonate kind of emotionally and uh, propel the story forward. I'll also say volume one ends with one of the best like kind of reveal slash cliffhangers that I've, I've ever read in a comic where I was just, I was genuinely surprised and just could not wait to see what happened next. So that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't wanna ruin too much of the story. Part of the fun of it, I think, is, is seeing what goes down. But lots of swearing, lots of violence in this one. And also, it's it's interesting because I do live in the South. Like, there's a ton of like Southern stereotypes in this, but uh, but the way they're played like isn't like in an offensive way to me as someone who lives in the South. It's like more like a hey, we we gotta look at some of these issues uh, kind of thing. Those are the three books I wanted to talk about today. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.